Welcome you to the Miko One Show. I'm your host, Cricket. I have a guest today, Elder Ryan D. Rutley. Welcome, Elder Ryan. Hey, hey, everybody. What's going on? And to Estelle, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your show today. It's a blessing. Thank you for taking the time out for us. We appreciate it. Just want to get started. You're a musician, you're an artist, and you're an author. Amen. So you have a lot to offer. So what was the motivation on becoming a Christian artist slash musician? That's a great question. Um, my mom and dad were uh, in love like crazy uh, early in our life. Um, and so we grew up in church. We were pew babies and uh, our dad was in the ministry. Mom was at home. She was a stay at home mother and they all raised us and um, and the admiration of the Lord. And so we always lip sing to commission and the whinings and all those, those musical geniuses back in the day, uh, Rance Allen group, uh, Douglas Miller, you name it. And, um, D Williams, all those guys, Barbara Sapp. Uh, and so, um, so my influence was earlier on seeing the, uh, the effects of, you know, the holy living and the, um, the family, the, the togetherness ministry uh so that was a major influence for me earlier on as a, as a lad and so in this pews my brothers and i would be in the seats in church acting like we was playing the instruments simultaneously with the music ministry and the band the choir members and so we faked it so well until we got serious about doing it and here we are today amen how do you prepare for your creativity process um, what I do is I sit down and always ask the artist, what is it that they envision? What do they see? What do they hear? Uh, what what is what do they want to accomplish in their music? So I'll sit down, I'll, I'll take in that. Uh, and then once I know what songs they want to do, their lyrics, then I sit down and I use uh, a beat maker uh, machine called uh, Reasons. Uh, and then I put together the beat. Then I put together the singers and the band according to the vision of the song. And I'll have the artist come in uh, to sing the song, but uh, a lot of times, um, a lot of times, uh oh, excuse me, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have them do pre-production first. So they'll just sing the song straight through, even if it's not done, if they need help writing it, arranging it, finishing, composing it, then I'll sit down with them um, and I'll, um, you know, I'll just, I kind of get the concept first. I like to lay down the foundation. And then after I lay down the foundation of the beat, the music, uh, bring in the singers and I bring in the person who sings the song. Then what I do is I mix the song, I edit out anything we don't want, anything we don't need, uh, and then uh, we master it. So mastering is just a, the final form of the song being commercially ready. When the song is commercially ready and we push it out to radio, we push it out to social media, and we upload it and it's ready for distribution. Amazing. Looking at your website, www.ryandrutley.com. Your favorite scripture seems like it's Philippians 1 and 6. And I just, yep. I'm reading from the King James Version, being confident of this very thing, that he was, which hath began a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Why yep. is that your favorite scripture? That's my favorite scripture because I'm a man or a person of results. Um, and so many times we get frustrated about the process and we so many times forget about the promise. And so um, that's my favorite scripture because in any circumstance, any place of life, anything that we do, we always need to hold on to a promise. We already know the problem. We already know the process, but sometimes we need to be reminded of the promise. And so my favorite scripture, I'll never forget, I was listening to actually Bishop Blake was preaching at an Azusa uh, experience. Um, I think this was in 1989 with Bishop Carlton Pearson and all the latest and greatest preachers of that time. And, uh, and he, when he quoted that scripture, I heard it and it rung in my spirit. I think I was like nine years old. Uh, and ever since that day, I, I just fell in love with that scripture. And to this day, I use it in every business aspect, in every ministerial aspect, um, and just even in life. And so 
um, just listening and looking at that verse in verse number six, it says, being confident of this very thing. And then he details it. He who has begun a good work in you, he will perform it. That's a promise until the day of Jesus Christ. And so a lot of times, when, again, we know the problem, we know the process, but we need the promise. And so if you ever need um, consolation and you need confidence, you, you got to know in what you have a confidence in. And that confidence is the promise. And so that's why that's my favorite scripture. And to this day, in everything I do, if I feel like giving up, feel like throwing in the towel, feel like walking away, feel like this task is too hard, this deadline is impossible, you know, then I always go back to that scripture and it, and it gives me a push. And so I just believe that's an encouragement for the entire body. It is. Amen. You have several, several albums out. And I just want to know which one is your favorite and why. And you on iTunes. Your, your albums yeah. are, you can download it and pay for it on iTunes. So which one yes. is your favorite album and why? Wow. Um, in regards to my record or just all the records in general? Because <laughs> kind of kind of tough. I would probably say, uh, man, that's I a great album. question. I said albums, Al not records. Albums. Right, 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 right. Um, I probably would pick the latest record, which is called Alter Call. Um, and uh, the reason why is because there were so many experiences uh, in my life that really forced that record to come forth. Uh, that record, there was a few songs that I really submitted to other artists and it didn't work out. And so I said, well, wow, you know, we, I wrote all these songs, you know, I don't, I'm the kind of person I don't believe in regrets. And so I figured I would use this record to, um, to really draw people back to the altar. And so uh, the reason why it's probably my favorite record is, is, is because of so many of the, of the investments that went into this record, time-wise, prayer time, um, uh, just uh, financially, it was a lot that went into the record. And then also the, the type of record it is, you know, so many people are gifted in this thing we call music uh, still. And, and I just think it's amazing that you know, even though everybody is gifted, that doesn't mean everybody has the power. And so I really want people to sense the power of God in this record by drawing them back to the altar. Uh, we, we, we do all these selfies. We do, you know, so many social media outlet um, approaches. We, we're, we're, we're mesmerized by what's on television. We're mesmerized by what's happening in our world today. So many times we look to the north, the south, the east, and the west, and we forget to come back to the altar. So I wanted to draw people back to that place of, of their sincerity and their realness and their transparency with God on the altar. And so uh, I think that's pretty, probably the reason why it's my favorite is because not only am I telling people about it, but it was my own personal experience. Yeah. You're such an entrepreneur. We yeah. call it a go So the business aspect <laughs> of it is... Yeah amazing, very creative. So tell us a little bit about the mission and vision statement of Psalms Group Studio. Yeah, so the vision for Psalms Group is the, the bottom line at the end of the day, God is not coming back for well-dressed, well-educated, well-degregated. He's coming back for well-done. And so my vision is, is that in everything that we do, I want God to be a parent in it. I want people to be able to look at it as a spiritual dictionary to say, man, Hey, you know, I want to be, uh, I, I want, I wanted to learn, learn how to be wealthy and powerful, successful all at the same time. And now I have to compromise who I am. You know, I, I want to give up who I am to be what I need to be for other people. Um, so that's the vision, the vision, uh, the mission statement is, um, is that creative people have creative problems. So you create your way out. <laughs> and so uh, I believe true success is not what you have. It's who else is affected by what you have. Um, and uh, I, I think that's very important. I think so many of our bishops and pastors and leaders who have died with the mantle in their hand, leaving all these spiritual bastards behind and haven't given people a chance to grow, um, to, to be a successor, not just to be a success, but to be better than them. And I, I think that's the worst tragedy. I think the, the worst thing in life is for me to have success and not ever show somebody else how to be successful. That's the problem. That's a problem for me. So every generation is supposed to get better. Husbands are supposed to love their wives. You know, 
we're supposed to we're supposed to make everybody around us better, not like us. And so uh, that's my vision and, and the vision and the mission statement for Psalms Group. And the and the biggest thing is 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 helping other people, man. That's that's what's more important. Because when you're dead and you're gone, you know the Bible says everything. There's a time, there's a season, there's a purpose. Time always runs out. Seasons always run out, but purpose never run out. When you're gone, that purpose lives on. And so that's what's important. If your purpose dies with you, then you really haven't accomplished anything. And and that's not what I want from my life for other people. But in business, and ministry, and life. I want other people to be better. And so that's my that's my battle cry. Talk about the businesses that's under that name, Psalm Studio Group. Psalms yeah. groups. This is several. Yeah. There are six entities. That. Yeah, it comprises of six activities. Number one is music production. Number two is taxes. Um uh, so I'm a I am by trade, uh, I have my degree in accounting. Um, and then creative arts and film just finished up a film in nine days last year in 2019. Um, so we were doing short films, music videos, all that kind of good stuff, we're trying to bring some more visuals uh, to the forefront now. Um, so you got music, production, taxes, creative arts and film. You got painting, interior and exterior painting. So I have crews. Sometimes I go out and do it myself. Um, and so I just believe in that interior or exterior, whether it's residential, whether it's commercial property, we paint. And so I uh, like to bring a different room to your atmosphere. Um, street ministry, um, and we visit the nursing homes, jails, prisons, you name it. Uh, we have pen pal ship between and relationships with different churches and people uh, to just spread the good news. Um, and it, we'll, we'll even stand on the street with a Jesus sign, just telling people, hey, he lives, man. Just And it'll spark their imagination. Uh, and then uh, also Christian modeling. So um, it's like a wide variety of everyday activities, also uh, athletes. So I like to minister to other people who like to work out, taking care of this temple, taking care of our bodies. I believe in that. Um, all of that is included and in, in, under the umbrella of Psalms Group. And so the singles ministries and all of those things are part of the outreach and street ministry as well. But there are all of these different entities fall up under this one umbrella. And I just believe in not just prioritizing, but management. And so that's the only reason why I'm successful. I have a great team of people that help me do this thing called ministry. Amen. Let's talk about your book, Singular. Yeah. What was the motivation behind writing the book? That's a great question. I actually went through the divorce. And so I'll never forget one time. Uh, before, right before I started the singles ministry, Cream of the Crop, uh, I'll never forget, uh, I met a group of people and uh, it was a bunch of us, a bunch of single young men, single young ladies. And the ladies was like, well, we're all the single good brothers at it. We were like, well, we're all the single good sisters at it. We should all fellowship and just get together, not just hook up, but just more so encourage each other. Because, you know, I don't want to always hear from my boys and she, you don't always want to hear from your girls. You know, sometimes you want to hear the opposite sex and how they think and how they reason. You know, and then, you know, you're looking forward to that one great day when you want to be married or remarried or, you know, you want to be in a relationship that is serious. Uh, and so when I started Cream of the Crop, the singles ministry, I'll never forget. I kept I kept thinking that if I feel this way about certain things in life, how many other people feel this way? So I didn't want to create a book that was just chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. It's actually 30 principles, 30 prayers and 30 pressures that we deal with as singles. Then there's a love letter from God that is in there. And every day on my dining room table, I write my desires before the Lord. And I talk to my wife prophetically and I write those desires out until the day that I meet her. And so I wanted to take that book. I want to take that experience. I wanted to take these pressures, prayers and principles, and I wanted to share them with the world. And so now the book uh, is available. Um, it's only uh, $20 and plus shipping, $5. Um, but we are always here to make sure that everybody gets a book and get a love letter from God in that book. Um, I, it's so many nuggets that are in there that are even helping husbands and wives who skipped over certain steps before they got married to learn the life of singlehood before they got into marriage. And so the book is helping uh, a lot of people, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, we've got plenty of books. Uh, the book is uh, online, and then also it should be on Barnes & Noble's. Um, and uh, Amazon next week. So I'm really, really excited about that. Okay. Cream of the Crop Ministries. Tell us a little bit about the Cream of the Crop Ministries and how it's entitled into your book. 
Yeah. So the cream of the crop ministries, it's one of those ministries. So, you know, you always hear about, you know, there are the youth retreats, there are marriage retreats, but it's not enough that's out there that's ministering and catering to the needs of singles. And I'm talking about meeting the needs, talking about everything that they think about. I mean, being able to answer all questions, whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's relationships that were broken, marriages that failed, uh, dealing with children as a single parent, being a widow, whatever angle you come from. If it, you're up in age and you feel like love, you've lost your touch, whatever that looks like for you as a single. Um, cream of the crop is a ministry, is it's just that. It's not just open to Pookie and them, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's Pookie and them cool, but this ain't for Pookie and them, all right? This is for people that are serious about God and serious about relationships, serious about marriage, uh, and just just serious about business and life. And just they need a direction, they need a steering, they need a compass for life. And so what we what we did, we started off with just potlucking, and we met up, we'll go bowling, we do trips, you know, we just do fun things, hanging out as singles to encourage the singles. So that, that's why it's called cream of the crop because we believe that we are cut above the rest. Uh, we are just not just anybody, but we are the cream of the crop. And I believe that there is somebody special for people that are special, you know. Um, and, uh, so with that being said, we created the cream of the crop ministries. And of course, the book um, is, is kind of coincides with the cream of the crop ministries in that it's a singles ministry and the book is geared towards the single, but it's really for everybody. And so the cream of the crop ministries is a, is a ministry. We, we always have something going on. Now we're doing things virtually because of the conditions of our land. Um, but cream of the crop ministry is a singles ministry. Uh, we have a Facebook page and uh, actually we'll be going live again next week, uh, next Saturday night. We're going to be talking about goals. So it's a, it's a ministry that's geared towards singles, but not just talking about being single, but the elements of being single. And that's why the book is called Singular. You know, the word plural, meaning more than one. Well, singular, it means to be, and, and the definition of singular is to be uniquely self, uniquely who you are. You're designed and you're created in such a, a special way that we have to learn how to know who we are and how to be the best version of ourselves so that when God connects us with someone else, we always think, you need somebody else to be complete, and that's not true. The Bible says you're complete in him. And then what you need from God now and from another person is companionship. So you're complete in God, but another person brings you companionship. And that's that's where people mess up. Because I think you and I was talking one time, Estelle, and, and, and women make that mistake. I'm dating God. I'm dating Jesus. Ma'am, you're going to be dating Jesus for a long time. Okay, because that ain't that ain't that's not attractive to a man that wants a wife or a woman. And that's just a little secret I'm giving y'all for free now. Y'all got to pay for the rest of it. <laughs> but in actuality, man, what's so cool about God is that he puts his character in another man. And then he he steers that woman, he helps that woman, he builds that woman by showing his characteristics through another person. And so that's now the balance of life. You can have the Holy Ghost, you can be water baptized, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can love God, you can love his people, you can love God's word. But now the balance in life now is that God will put another person in front of you to learn now the key elements to love, the key elements to life. Um, and, and there's no better way that you can do that than from another person. And so uh, that's why Cream of the Crop is created for that sense of balance. You know, and in the sense also of accountability and brotherhood and sisterhood and friendships. You never know who you meet, man. You never know who God might connect you with, when he connects you, how he connects you. So sometimes that balance in life is just being around other people so that you know you're not crazy. Um, if that's where that's where it stemmed from. Amen. Want to say thank you again, Elder Ryan D. Rudley, for being My a pleasure. part of the Me Call Show. It was truly a blessing. I always close with the prayer. So I want to know, can you please close us out with the prayer? It will be an honor. First of all, thank you so much uh, to Sister Estelle Humphreys and your entire crew 
uh, this show is touching lives, is blessing people. And I just want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of it. And I believe no eye has seen, no ears heard, neither has it into the hearts of man what God has in store for you because you love him and because this is such a creative platform to be able to reach so many people. So thank you so much. And I'll be more than honored to close us in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you, to praise you, to love you. You, We are good at being human, but you are better at being God. And we magnify you and we praise you and we lift you up and we love you and we appreciate you, God, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Forgive us for all of our sins, all of our iniquities, any shortcomings, any procrastinations, any mismanagements. Forgive us, help us, build us up where we're weak and help us to maintain where we're strong. I'm praying a special blessing, God, for this show, for this podcast, for Estelle and the crew, that you will bless them, Father God, to go beyond the walls of their own imagination for them to go beyond their own capacity. I pray that they will be able to reach so many souls, millions of lives, thousands of lives, so many people, Lord God, across the world and this globe. I pray that you bless them and open doors that no man can shut, Lord God. Continue to bless that these topics would be able to be reachable to people and that they will be realistic, they'll be practical in their approach and in the principles that are given. And in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now, God, that all of these things are so, continue to keep us healthy and strong, We'll be careful to glorify you and praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Thank you. Amen. You're so welcome. Thank you.